in terms of thinking about reading and writing, I want to make the, the case that reading and writing are connected really at the most basic levels in the most intimate ways. Uh, there's no reading without writing. Um, you know, somebody has to create the text for it to be read. And there's no purpose for writing without reading. Even when we just write for ourselves, one of the things that we're doing is we're serving as a reader. So when we talk about reading and writing, we often think about them in terms of instruction as disconnected pieces. But in reality, um, they're connected at the most intimate levels. Now, in terms of me making this statement or um, advancing this proposition, I always like to think about what's the underlying reasons why we think reading and writing are supported. And in a sense, really what I'm getting at is why should you bring reading and writing together in these kind of intimate ways and supportive ways in your classroom? So what I'd like to do is share with you three theories or three ways of thinking about these connections between reading and writing. And I'd like to give credit where credit's due on this and give a shout out to Tim Shanahan, who's really advanced uh, these three viewpoints. One of these viewpoints focuses in on how reading and writing draw upon the same knowledge sources uh, when you go about engaging in them. And this is called the shared knowledge theory. And it's really pretty straightforward or simple. Uh, basically, reading and writing are connected as they draw upon the same knowledge and cognitive processes. And so if you improve students' writing skills, the way that this would go is that there should be an improvement in students' reading skills and vice versa. And a nice way of thinking about this is a well where you have a bucket or two buckets, if you'd like, a reading bucket and a writing bucket. And the well represents your knowledge and processes and skills that kids bring to the task of reading and writing and they draw upon that knowledge and skills when they do either reading or writing. It's a, it's a general knowledge base that allows them to be successful, both as readers and writers. Now, if I say that, then what are those common knowledge bases? So one of the, the things that they share in common that both reading and writing draw upon is pretty obvious. And that is when you read, you're reading about something. When you write, you're writing about something. So you're drawing upon a shared uh, to uh, topic knowledge or content or domain knowledge base. So if I write a story about outer space or I read a, a story about outer space, I'm drawing upon my knowledge of outer space in order to understand the story or to be able to cre create the story. Also, there's meta knowledge that we draw upon as readers and writers. And this is basically what we know about the purposes and functions of written language. So a real simple example here. I'm going to go back to writing a story. You know that stories include characters. There's some event that typically happens or a purpose that sets off the action and the plot that involves a story. Um, characters have various emotions that they express throughout the story. There's some resolution to those actions. Uh, that the story and get, you know, that the main characters engage in. And the story takes place sometimes in a moving setting, but definitely in a place and time. Now, readers use that information to help them make sense of what they read. Writers use that information to help them structure and, and produce ideas for their stories. So another way that we draw upon this kind of shared knowledge in reading and writing is we know a lot about the functions of reading and writing, the different types, whether story writing, persuasive writing, informative writing, their purposes, and the basic elements that constitute them. 